do a quick review. So, we do lots of graphing in this class. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is x intercepts. X or x and y intercepts. Okay. Um, what's an x or a y intercept? Basic. What is it? I say, what are the intercepts? What am I talking about? It's where the graph touches the x or y axis, right? All right, how do you find them? That's it. So the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. And the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So if this is my function, y is equal to x cubed minus 4x, and I ask for the y-intercept, what do I do? What do you do? Mm -hmm. So we just go x equals 0, plug it into the equation. I think obviously you don't need to actually show all this, but you get y is equal to 0. Sorry? Oh, for the other one, sorry. Uh, one sec. Um, so then what do I want you to do for the y-intercept is to write it as an ordered pair. So this would be 0, 0. OK, x, y ordered pair. And then the x-intercept. Set y equal to zero. So the equation becomes x cubed minus 4x. How do you solve that? What do we do? What can you do? There's only one thing you can really do here for our first step. Factor. If you don't know what to do, try factoring. So if you pull out an x, you get that. You could factor the second set. x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. Oops. So it turns into x plus 2, x minus 2. So then your intercepts are whatever makes each bracket 0, right? So 0, negative 2, and positive 2. So x is equal to 0, negative 2, positive 2. So as ordered pairs, it would be up to the side here, 0, 0, which we had there, so we knew that. Uh, negative 2, 0, and positive 2, 0. There's your x-intercepts. All right. This is just to get us back into doing some math, because I know nobody's done math in a while. All right. Um, OK. Normally, I would assign questions from the book right now, but we don't have a book. So let's go get one. We're going to go down to the library. You'll need, actually, I don't think. You have an iPhone? There you go. Then it worked. Did it work? Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. 
three types of symmetry. There is symmetry with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, and the origin. So symmetry with respect to the x-axis, basically, if you reflect the graph over the x-axis, you get the same graph. Okay, so similar to what we did in Math 12, we talked about reflections. Um, so reflection across the x-axis. So for example, the graph here, y is equal to plus or minus root x. You can see if you flip it over the x-axis, the graph is exactly the same, okay? Visually, that's easy to see. Symmetry, when you're looking at the graph, is pretty easy, all right, because you can just look at it. Algebraically, is a little trickier. So the algebra of this to test for symmetry, um, if you replace y with negative y and generate the same equation, it has symmetry with the origin, or sorry, with uh, the x-axis. So if I actually did that, if I went negative y is equal to plus minus root x, how do I get rid of the negative on the y? You divide it off, right? Or multiply it across or whatever. But then when you do that, positive or negative on the other side still becomes positive or negative. So you generate the same equation. Sorry, plus minus. So you get the same equation as what you had before. And if that happens, it has symmetry with respect to the x-axis. Okay? That one's a little weird. You'll see when we do the y-axis and the x or the origin, it makes a little more sense. Okay, so any questions about that? X-axis symmetry means if you flip the graph over the x-axis, you get the same graph. That's all it means. <clears throat> y-axis symmetry. What do you think that is? That's the algebra, yeah. Basically, if you flip it over the y-axis, you get the same graph. So, This type of symmetry is also called an even function, okay? So visually, the most straightforward is a parabola centered at the origin. And you can see if you flip it over the y-axis, you get the exact same graph. Algebraically, you have an even function, which is y-axis symmetry. If, and then this is the technical term, f of x is equal to f of negative x, i.e. replace x with negative x and generate the same equation. Okay. 
I'll show you what I mean by this. So if I just do y is equal to x squared, if I replace x with negative x, so I get negative x. Now that the whole thing is being squared, so you have to put it in brackets. Okay. What's a negative number squared? What's negative x squared? Positive x squared, so it becomes just x squared, which is the same as that. So if when you put negative x in, you get the exact same function out, it is an even function. Okay? Therefore, even. If it doesn't give you the same, it's not an even function. And we'll do one at the end to test all of them, just an example to show you. All right, so we've done x-axis, we've done y-axis. There's one other type of symmetry. Does anybody know what it is? I'll draw the graph, see if you can guess it, the basic graph. So They might know what that graph is. I'm sorry? Not a refraction. That would be a light. But you're you're close. This is the graph of y is equal to x cubed. Does it have symmetry? With what? Across what? It's the opposite quadrant, which is reflection with the origin, all right? If you flip it, essentially you do two flips. You go that way and then that way, you get the same graph. It's called a reflection with the origin, okay? Symmetry with the origin, I should say, sorry. So it's... This is called a... It's the last one. Look at the degree of the last one. Even, so they call it an even function. Now, this only works for polynomials, okay? Um, so this would be a odd function. Symmetry with the origin is an odd function. So the algebraic way is you've, do, you've done two flips. I get, don't you need to draw this? I get that graph. And then I go over the x axis, I get that graph. Does everybody see that? So if you go over the y, that is uh, f of negative x. And then if you go over this way, that's changing the y's, right? You put a negative x. Okay, so we'll sum it up here. So the algebra is oops, um, I'll write it in the math way, and then I'll just put it in normal words. So the math way, you can write it two ways. You can say if negative f of negative x equals your original function, so you've done two replacements. Or, this is actually the way that I prefer to write it, negative f of x equals f of negative x. Those are the same thing. All I did was take this negative here and put it on this one. All right, that's all I did. Um, then, the function is odd. So let's do an example. 
So you're replacing x with negative x and y with negative y. That's what you're doing. Actually, I'll write that. So if our original function is y is equal to x cubed, I replace y with negative y. So I just put a negative in front of the y. And I replace x with negative x. So the negative is inside the brackets like that. And then you simplify it. See what you get. So, uh, what's negative x cubed? Negative x cubed, right? Stays negative. Then, can I get rid of that negative in front of the y? By dividing it off or multiplying it off. And you get y is equal to x. Jesus. There we go. Y is equal to x cubed. Since I generated the same, it's an odd function. Okay? So we'll do a practice one here where we test all three. Are there any questions? But that's the hard one. That's the tricky one. But once you do a couple of them, it kind of just makes sense. So let's do, let's test one here. So I want to determine the symmetry of y is equal to 2x cubed minus x. So we're just going to test all three of them quickly. All right. So the first one is x-axis symmetry. How do you test x-axis symmetry? Remember, that was over the x-axis. So you're changing what values? The y values. So that means negative y has to equal y, right? If you put a negative y in there, you should get the same function. So if I put a negative y in here, I get that. But then i got to get rid of the negative in front of the y, so what do I do? Multiply or divide it off, what happens to everything on the other side? Yeah, they're all going to flip signs, right? So you're going to get this. Is that the same as that? No. So does it have symmetry with the uh, x-axis? No. No sim. Okay, so then we'll test the y-axis. So what is y-axis symmetry? What do you put in? Right. Y-axis, you're going this way. So you're putting a negative x in, right? So essentially that's f of x is equal to f of negative x. So if I put a negative x in there, remember it has to be in brackets. So it should look like that. Negative x is inside both brackets. If you cube a negative, you get a negative. So I'll get negative 2x cubed. Negative and negative becomes positive. Is this the same as the original? No. So no symmetry with that.
So we, we're done process of elimination. We know what it's going to be, but let's just show it anyway, okay? And so then the origin. What was the origin symmetry? Yeah, so you replace a y with negative y and an x with negative x, right? So mathematically, you'd write this. I'll just say replace y with negative y and x with negative x. So we take our first equation here. So I get negative y is equal to 2 times negative x cubed. The right side of it, we just did on our test, right? This bit here is essentially this. So I know that's going to be negative 2x cubed plus x. How do I get rid of the negative? Divide it or multiply it across, and you get, which flips the signs back. Is that the same? Therefore, it's an odd function. Now, anybody see a faster way to do this without doing any of the algebra? Without sketching the graph. What's the fast way that you could have just looked at this and done it? If it's a polynomial function, which these are, you just look at the degrees here. That's an odd degree, that's an odd degree, therefore it's a odd function. That's an even degree, therefore it's a even function. All right, that works with polynomials though. There's always exceptions, right? So what if I gave you this? Is sine x odd or even? You think? You got a 50-50 chance, or neither. It could be neither. Is sine x odd or even? And we'll do cosine too. So think of the graphs. Way back in math 12, I know that was a long time ago for some of you. So sine x, where does that graph start? Or starts right at zero. Does everybody, whoops, it's a bad sine graph there. There we go. There's a sine graph, right? But remember, it continues in the other direction. So, is it odd or even? Just look at it, it's odd function because it's got symmetry with the origin. Okay? So, sine is an odd function. Cosine, you remember the cosine graph? Looks like this. This sort of ringing bells? It just needs to ring some bells. It doesn't have to be like, I remember this exactly. Is that odd or even? Even, because it's got symmetry with the x-axis. So cosine is an even function. All right. OK, uh, any questions? We're not gonna, well, think about it. Okay, let's do 10. I wasn't going to ask that, but do we remember the tan graph? So what is it? Remember, and then it goes like this. <laughs> that would be an odd function, right? Because it's got symmetry. I, want, I don't expect you to do the tan graph, but. Okay.
Are we okay? All right, here's your questions. Page eight again. 29 to 35 odd. And then math 12 review is over and we get to start the fun stuff. <laughs>